Hello and welcome to another FGTN podcast episode, the night version. We've moved to 9 p.m. Central on Tuesday nights. This is the first episode at this time. So I hope you're tuning in, ready to wind down for the night, hop into the conversation. I'm your host, Alex Tim, and buckle up because we're diving into some heavy hitting topics on this episode. First up, a serious issue putting some of nature's most majestic creatures at risk. But don't worry, we've also got fresh podcast updates, brand new gear to inspect, and even a boat shopping mission that I'm on these next few weeks that needs your expert advice. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. If you're in the chat, uh, go ahead and uh, drop a comment in here where you're tuning in from and what you're most looking forward to this weekend. Are you getting out on the wa- on the water are you fishing from the shore, fishing from a dock, boat, kayak? What is your open water plans for this year? All right, let's go ahead and jump into the first topic for the night. Is not a fun one, but it's something that I saw uh, that popped up. I, of course, am from here in Minnesota, and I saw this topic pop up, and I'm like, huh, this is really interesting. And it's actually about a Minnesota uh, area waterway. So lead, lead fishing tackle is blamed for 26 swan deaths in Ramsey County. There's a video. I'll play the video a little bit uh, in just a second. But the high level of it is that uh, since 2019, at least 26 swans have been found dead along the channel, which this channel is in Vadness Heights, Minnesota, if you're familiar with the area. <clears throat> Just right in the middle of the Twin Cities, but 26 trumpeter swans have died since 2019, and all of them that they've tested have had lead poisoning, which is not good. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a couple minutes of this video. It's it's actually a minute and a half, a minute 50 long. So we'll play this. I'll stop it. We'll have a little conversation about it. Let me know your comments uh, as the video's rolling, and then we'll jump into a few more topics. It's gonna be kind of laid back tonight. Uh, so if you've got questions or anything like that, drop it in the comment section and we'll go ahead and go in, but I'll play this right now. Lead pollution is also impacting wildlife in Ramsey County, but county leaders say it's from a different source. They are weighing new fishing restrictions after they say lead tackle caused more than two dozen swan deaths in Vadness Heights. Our Jason Rantala shows us what the county is doing to come up with a solution. Sucker Lake Channel in Venice Heights is a recreational escape. Smack dab in the middle of the cities, it's primarily known for two things, fishing. We have a lot of people fishing along the channel. And hundreds of trumpeter swans. It is very popular for waterfowl. But since 2019, Michael Goodnature with Ramsey County Parks and Rec says at least 26 swans have been found dead along the channel. It's um, pretty significant numbers. Goodnature says testing done by both the University of Minnesota and the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center show lead as the cause of death. Of all the swans that were brought in for testing, all of them turned up positive for lead poisoning. They've got to do something. Yeah, that's way too many. I that's would, way I too would many. Say. Nan and Mike Ruth visit the area once a week. I knew that there was problem with lead on the fishing uh, equipment. In recent years, signage has gone up around the channel advising people to use non-lead tackle. The city and state have even installed drop-off boxes to dispose of it. But the county may take it a step further. They held a virtual meeting last week to gather community feedback. There was a lot of support for the wildlife. One option, outlawing fishing entirely. Well, if that's going to help the swans, you know, maybe that's the thing to do. With no official decision quite yet. We just hope that there is something done about the lead. In Vadness Heights, Jason Rantala, WCCO News. Good nature says they're... So pretty interesting if you ask me. I am not a fan of banning fishing. I don't think that's the answer here that we're looking for. Uh, but it is serious. So as you're looking at your fishing tackle, both open water and ice fishing, the th- thing that I would encourage you to do is look at when you're buying new uh, if it's not, some states actually already ban lead. Uh, so in some lakes and riverways do as well in certain areas as well. So if you can still use lead, uh, you know, go ahead and use it. That's up to you. I know I stopped buying lead uh, fishing tackle a couple of years ago. Uh, tungsten has come down pretty significantly in price. And so it makes it actually pretty affordable 
uh, to look at getting tungsten. And we're going to actually talk about some some new baits and things tonight that are tungsten. Uh, one of the the big things that uh, some of the companies like Clam came out with a new line this year where they removed lead from their Clam Pro Tackle lineup on at least a couple of uh, different baits. And they actually are using zinc now. Zinc is, of course, lighter, uh, but it is an alternative to lead. Um, so I think that's always a good idea and something to be uh, looking at. Quentin, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in here. People shooting them with lead BBs. Uh, they aren't blaming them, though. You know, it. It's, uh, it is interesting. You'd think if they were doing an autopsy on them, they would have found those uh, lead BBs. Um, I've heard of people doing that. And so I do not doubt that that is potentially part of it, especially if they're finding that they've eaten it. It could be a BB that's gone in the water, sunk down, and the trumpeter swan goes down and eats them because they think that it's food as well. So that's a very high likelihood of being something that could be causing this. So I've got to go ahead and remove the screen here and then pull it back in so we can get to the other tabs. Give me just one second. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to the 9 p.m. FGTN podcast. We are going to uh, be rolling our normal podcast show tonight. I know we've taken a couple of weeks off, um, but that is going to get back on track. So let me know if you're tuning in here. Love to see who's here live on the podcast. Um, We appreciate it. All right. Uh, Another thing that I want to talk about, podcast update here. Uh, This is the new time. Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Central, we're going to be doing this uh, as we move forward. As we get into the summertime, um, I think a lot of people are busy around dinner time, getting kids to bed, getting dinner done, uh, and it's kind of wind down time later in the evening. And so that's why we've moved to 9 p.m. It works good for my family, works good for me. And we can kind of hang out. We can uh, answer some Q&A at the end uh, if there are any of those after we get through the content. So that is what we're looking at. What you have here on uh, the page and will be linked down below. If it's not already in the description and in the comment section, it will be. Uh, There's a link to this form. If you want to be a guest on the podcast, if you want to be a co-host one night on the podcast and you have a topic you want to cover, um, we are going to be opening it up this summer, um, trying a few new things here on the Tuesday evening podcast having more dialogue, having more guests. And so if you're interested, feel free to fill this form out uh, and you can go ahead and get entered in uh, for a chance for me to reach out to you and see uh, what you want to talk about on the podcast. So all it is is entering your email, your name, any specific topics you want to uh, talk about, best way to get a hold of you, where do you live? This is, I'm just looking for like state or, um, you know, if you're in Canada, where you're at, city, Uh, any other comments that you have, and then just making sure that you've got a webcam and audio uh, to be able to hop on the live stream. So if you're interested uh, and you want to hop on here, if you're a regular and you want to hop onto the stream, um, we are going to be opening that up here uh, within the next couple of weeks. So feel free to fill this out. I do think I have it linked down below. All right. Uh, Some new uh, evolutions of, of some technology in the fishing space. On X, I think a lot of us have heard about, I don't know if I've talked about Onyx Fish before, but On X Hunt is a hunting app uh, that's intended to help people find leases of land, find property, um, uh, land uh, marks, find uh, the different uh, humps in areas when they're out hunting, find how they can get access onto certain land, where there's privately owned land, who the owner is, reaching out to the owner to be able to hunt certain land. Um, so on X hunt is really where this started. They've just recently began launching within the past, I would say nine months or so on X fish right now. It's only in beta. Uh, the beta is for the state of Minnesota, but it is a fishing app. Um, I right now can't for the life of me, figure out how to get it in the app mode. I can only get it on line. And so I'm going to show you that here in a second. But it's actually pretty cool. I'll have to do a whole nother video once it officially launches. I think it's going to launch later this month, like officially, officially, uh, from what I was reading, at least for the state of Minnesota. So uh, once it does, I'll do a full video on it because I've got a tactic I'm going to try this year to target 
specific species of fish. And we're going to talk a little bit through it here tonight. So why use a fishing app? I think everybody knows why you use a fishing app, right? You want to understand what's in the body of water. So the species information is important. How do you get on the water, boat ramps, access points, what to expect when you show up, terrain maps, fishing regulations, um, and resources to find the best public access locations. You also want to be able to see the depths of the waterway. And then, of course, there's a ton of other features, weather features, lots of other things that some of these apps have. And Onyx Fish is not, um, you know, not standing out from anybody in terms of missing those features. They have all of those features plus more. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Um, meet on X and unlock the future of fishing. They call it the future of fishing because they have a couple of things that I've never seen in an app before. Uh, how's it going? Uh, flock of moose in tuning in from Detroit. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, they've got this species finder, which I'm super excited about. Nobody else has this. And what it's going to allow you to do is actually look for a specific species and have specific waterways show up. You can also look for tournament. Uh, I'm sorry, not tournament trophy uh, of specific species as well. So over a certain size threshold in the app, they say this, like, for instance, I think it's like walleye over 25 inches. If there's a significant number over that, they consider it a trophy walleye lake largemouth bass, like everything's got uh, a certain limit to where if there's a certain amount over it, uh, they will go ahead and call it a trophy lake for that species, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll get through this and just show it to you because I think that's where the excitement comes in. 3D terrain maps, pretty self-explanatory. Lake depth maps, pretty explanatory. Uh, so they've got public fishing access sites, fishing regulations. This is really cool. I don't know any of the other apps that have fishing regulations. Again, this is a beta for the state of Minnesota. And so they've been able to connect into the uh, DNR's website and databases to get a lot of this information, which is something that I've been wanting somebody to do for a long time. And I honestly thought Omnia with their Omnia app was going to be the first one to do it, um, but they they didn't. It's on X Maps that was actually on X Fish that was the first one to do it. And I'll show you that here in a second. Best times and conditions to hit the water, recent satellite imagery, and a ton more. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop over into it. Version of the app. Again, I can't figure out how to get it on my phone right now other than going to the web browser. If you know, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll continue to do research because I plan on this year using this a lot. I'm going to use this app. With the on uh, with the Omnia app, and the reason why, and I'll try to show it to you here first. I would uh, what I, my plan is this year. I'm going to try to do new tactic for targeting certain species. I'm going to say, okay, Saturday this weekend, if I were going to be going out fishing, I would say, okay, what's the species that I want to target, and do I want to target uh, size or do I want to target um, like catch rate? So I want quantity or do I want quality? Most of the time, I'm going for quality, um, and so that's what we're going to look at here today. So um, we're going to pick a species. Let's just call it. Let's just call it walleye. Okay. So this is the state of Minnesota. It might lag a little bit, and if it lags out on us, I'll just have to uh, stop it. But because um, it's a lot, of, let me refresh this browser tab and see if it loads up a little bit better. I just wanted to zoom out. And then I'm going to show you if we look by species for trophy walleye lakes, what it's going to look like. Now, I, I know a few of them around the Twin Cities. And so we will see if there's any new ones that pop up. I haven't done this very extensively yet uh, as we get this thing rolling. All right. So it's slowly loading in slowly, slowly, slowly. Internet is bogged down right now. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right. And for some reason, they don't have the species in here. I think it's maybe because I'm not logged in. Let me go ahead and... Pop into solo real quick here. I'm going to get logged in. 
and see if that helps us get set up here. Anybody heard of or use the Omnia or the Onyx Fish app so far? I'd be interested to know. if you have had any success with it filters here we go all right here we go we're back all right so what you can do is when you open it up it was in a different spot than what i had thought i am logged in zoom out here so you can see saint paul minneapolis I think this is a lake that i had clicked a bunch of other waterways okay this is what we're going to do at the top here you can see filters so you can tell I've obviously been playing with this. So if I click on filters, fish species, I've got walleye already selected, but let's uh, let's go ahead and select it again. So you can see you can choose bass and then you can choose your species. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do smallmouth. Let's find a smallmouth bass lake. Smallmouth bass, okay? That's all that I'm worried about. Uh, and I want to be able to launch my boat there. So I need a trailer accessible boat launch. Okay, so we're going to click done and now what it's doing is it's looking on this map for lakes that have smallmouth bass in them that i can launch my boat now here's where it gets interesting there you do you see this i know it's probably hard to see so let me get my magnifying glass here do you see that little trophy here where it says trophy on the lake right next to mons lake and there's a trophy next to walleye what that means is there's trophy walleye potential in this lake based off of the last DNR survey. So that, that's what it's based off of. So if I click on this lake, I'll be able to see it. But let's see if we can find a trophy bass, trophy panfish, trophy walleye. It's not loading more. So I guess in this area, there's not more. So we're just going to click on one of these that has trophy walleye. Two River Lake. Actually, Lake Alexander looks interesting. Oh, this one, no, this one does have bass trophy. Okay, let's see if it's smallmouth. So Two River Lake has the trophy on it. We can see right here, has the trophy, boat access, walleye, and bass. So we're going to click on Two River Lake. And boom, there's 10 fish species. Now it zoomed us in directly to this lake. Gosh, this thing is bogging down. Uh, okay, so we've got 10 fish species. It's a 583-acre lake. It has a boat launch, no carry-in launches. It has toilets. It has boat docks, which is good. And we've got trophy potential for walleye. Length range 8 to 30 inches. Average length of 15 inches. The largest fish in survey year 2019 was a 29 inch fish. So you can see this because I, I just clicked on walleye. And so it's saying trophy potential. This lake has a history of supporting trophy size walleye based on past surveys. 2019 was the past survey five years ago. And so you can see the species as a percentage of fish of the 41 walleyes uh, surveyed. Now let's click on bass. Uh, bass. Oh, it's a largemouth bass uh, trophy potential. Average length, 15 inches with a length range of 11 to 18. So I don't know what they're calling trophy potential. I don't know if like a 17 inch is considered trophy, <coughs> but it does look like they had a largest fish caught of 20 inches. Pretty interesting. Let's go back and look at maybe one of these other lakes that has a, um, maybe Little Rock Lake. It says uh, tro trophy panfish. Let's see what it's saying about those fish species. All right, bluegill. Three to five inches. Those are tiny bluegill. Oh, but in 2022, they caught a 10-inch bluegill, 2016 10-inch bluegill. So what's interesting is they're, they're basing it based off of all of the survey data that they have not just however i don't know if they however they caught this uh grouping of 10 fish they're obviously not looking at that <coughs> excuse me they're looking at the uh all of the fish that they caught so they caught a 10 inch bluegill in 2022 and a 10 inch in 2016. so if i wanted a big bluegill lake 
I'd probably go try this one, considering it was surveyed back in 2022, which, which was just two years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's right off the Mississippi River. So as I'm zooming out here, it looks like it's north of St. Cloud. I've never fished this lake, so I'm not trying to give out hot spots or anything like that. Smallmouth had good size at Twin River. That is awesome. Good. <coughs> All right. Next up, we've got the Acme. Brand new gear here. I'm going to take a drink here. The Kalen's Landing Net. Have you guys seen the ads for this on Facebook or Instagram or online anywhere? I've seen a ton of them. So I actually, uh, full transparency, I purchased one of these at the the uh, the fishing show, the boat show this weekend, the Northwest Boat Show or whatever it's called, uh, that was down at the Minneapolis Convention Center this last weekend. Um, this was one of the things that I picked up <clears throat> at the show. It's $150. They had it 20% off at the show, so I saved 30 bucks on it, paid $120 for it. Um, it is pretty awesome. So it is a pro featherweight series landing net. Um, it is endorsed by Tom Boley that we can see here, which is, yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, Tom's a great guy. And so um, that's good good for him, good for the brand. Uh, what I will tell you is I, I tried a lot of nets while I was there because I'm in the market for a new one. I used to have a kayak net, but I need a longer armed one uh, because I'm getting a boat this year, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, and so I wanted one with a longer handle on it and I, I wanted it to be lightweight. And so what I got was this guy right here. This is the lightest one that I held in my hand that was very well balanced. 1.86 pounds. The basket's 22 inches by 26 by 18 inches deep. It's got rubber-coated high-density reinforced netting. This netting is awesome on this thing. Um, I, have, I have no concerns about it. The stitching even looks pretty good. It's all aluminum around the rim of it which is great and then the net hangs down so there is a right way to hold it up and down and it's so that way that doesn't loop over uh that uh um the aluminum ring that's on it right there the aluminum hoop is what they call it it's got an ultra high strength carbon fiber handle and it's telescoping handle so of course you can push it all the way in here like you can see in this first picture uh but you can also if you pull it just straight out it's three feet and then it unscrews in the middle. You can extend it and it goes to a full six feet with a half turn locking for quick deployment of the extension. So this is pretty cool. One of Acme's biggest new launches for this year that they've launched. Um, it is it is awesome. I paid for it. Uh, I would highly recommend it if you're in the market for a new net. Uh, a couple other things from Acme. They did launch a few other new things this year. Uh, they've got the Kalen's Minnow Jerk Minnow. We'll go ahead and open this guy up, take a look at it. I'm not a big fan of a lot of like looking into like the tackle so much because it seems like everybody comes out with so much new stuff that's just like a slight variation different. Uh, the only reason why I'd really call it out is if I know it's gonna it's gonna do a really good job because I've used it before, or if it's pretty like game changing or a complete pivot from anything that we've really ever seen before. These I wouldn't say are. But um, I heard a lot of good things about them. So this is the Mini Jerk. It's a three-inch minnow, 10-pack. And of course, they didn't just launch this. Um, they also launched with it uh, the Kalen Slip Bobber Live Bait Jigs. And they had another jig, too, that they showed it paired up with. Uh, but I don't see it here either. Uh, they've got the Reef Stalker Junior, the 900JR. Uh, and they've got... a ton of different colors of these so if you're into uh thick bait this could be a good option for you this is brand new this year so if you're interested in picking up some new gear go ahead and check that out and then they've got their uh slip bobbers so one thing this year i need to get some new slip bobbers for is i want them to have the black bottom on them um all of mine have like a lighter colored bottom on the bobber uh this is of course a dark blue which could work out really well. They've got a quarter ounce and a half ounce, four forty nine and four ninety nine for the half ounce. So pretty sweet. So that is what they've got uh, from Acme. 
Another new product this uh, in that was just announced relatively recently is the ESR Micro Finesse and the Finesse Tungsten Jig. So these last three things that are on this page here. And so um, what these are is jigs, obviously, but there's three. I'll click on one of them, but I want to explain them first. So you've got your jig head, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then you've got ones that have your bait. Um, it's uh, it's like a little rubber ball on there that's to help you keep the bait on. Um, you've also got the weedless version of it that's kind of got those strands that cover the hook so you can pull through weeds and hopefully it deflects over the hook. And then you've got the uh, tungsten jig head, the finesse, that has more of the bait keeper at the very top, you can see, uh, where it's got like the ribs at the top. So if you throw a plastic on, it should hold it on better. Um, and so that's that one. So we're going to go ahead and click on this guy right, right here. here. The ESR Nano Tungsten <coughs> are ice fishing jigs. I have those. I bought those. They work well. So this is how they work. ESR stands for Enhanced Sonar Return. What these are are jigs that are intended to give you a better uh, reflection back, a better return from your live imaging uh, equipment. And this, just so that you know, isn't just for live imaging. It works better on all sonar. Because of the design of the, the jig head, it's got that flat surface. So as the beams are coming down, boom, it smacks it and it can bounce back up. This is one of a few. There's a few others out there that are designing things like this. Uh, this is one that I've tried. I've tried the ice fishing version of it, and it actually does work pretty well. I wouldn't say it's like game changing, but you can definitely see it a little bit better, which is awesome. <coughs> and back to what we were talking about before. These are tungsten. So again, if you're looking to ditch the lead, this could be a really good way to do it, uh, getting into tungsten. So look at potentially picking those up. All right. Something I'm pretty excited to talk about here. This is the Ice Pro trailer. Uh, you guys, if you guys know me, you know I love ice fishing. The season's, of course, over for this year. Uh, but check out this trailer. I put a video out on the channel a few days ago uh, after the sports show that I went to. And it was this, they've only made two of these to, to date. Um, it is a small Minnesota company that's just getting into it. Uh, they make, I think Scamp is the name of the brand, S-C-A-M-P, of the normal trailers that they make. And they just started getting into ice fishing trailers. So if you watch this video here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can see all of the really cool things about it. Some of the things that I really like about it that I'll talk about the interior. It's just clean. Now, granted, it's not. You guys know I used a Core Ice House this year. Um, they're in completely different leagues. Um, this is not one that's fully waterproof, and you can hose the thing out. Um, but it is built fairly well, um, and it's intended to be a really lightweight option that's portable. It's compact. It's nice and it's cozy. And I will say, like, it is sweet. They've got some pretty cool amenities in here. So in this first picture, a couple things that I'll call out. The windows. So they do have the window shades on them, and these are dual pane. So this is going to allow you to have more of that insulated rather than a single pane window uh, that you'd normally have like in a travel trailer. They've got cubbies up in the, up in the top here. Those cubbies have a net there that's going to allow you to put some gear in there and not have it fall out when you're going down the road. Those are two speakers up top in the corners that you can barely see. And then there's a radio stereo in the middle, and it has an HDMI input on it. What you can't see in this picture is on this wall by the door is there is a TV on the wall. I think it's a 32-inch TV. They've got uh, a 25,000 BTU suburban forced air furnace that's underneath this bench. And it's vented out to the sides, one over here on the, the left and on the right. You've got hole lights by each of the holes. And these are tap hole lights. So you can tap them on and off. You've got a cabinet back here. They talked about maybe making one that has like a stove oven in it or something like that. Uh, you've got lights up here, lights throughout. And you've got a TV antenna up here. Catch covers. And you've got the rubber coin flooring. Uh, you've got an AC outlet on both the left wall and the right wall as well as USB charging ports there as well. Um, in the photo next to it, what we can see is the other angle. So this does not have a ramp door that goes down as a toy hauler, but it has two doors that kind of bifold that you can, bifold's the wrong word, uh, French door style that you can open up. 
And then they've got uh, some small, I think they're four foot ramps that you can put down to be able to pull your machine in and out. I think it's only four and a half feet wide though. So like for me, I've got a tracked ATV. I wouldn't be able to fit it in through this back door. Um, but if you have, if I only had wheels on my ATV, I think it would fit. And so that's something just to be aware of. I talked to the guys about it and they said, yeah, we know, um, we're, who knows if we're going to do anything about it or not. I think they're, they're just excited. This is the second one that they built. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you've got a couple speakers back here in the top corners, more lights up top. And then you've got that TV in the top corner there. And then you've got two additional holes that you couldn't see from the other angle before. So a total of six holes inside of this ice house, which is pretty cool. In terms of dimensions, it is six and a half feet wide. Uh, the interior floor space, I think they said is about 14 feet, but the total like uh, trailer is 17 feet. Uh, and I think it's like six and a half or six foot 10 for, for uh, clearance inside of it. You can see what it looks like here uh, with those ramps in pulling an ATV in, you can see it's so lightweight that you can actually pull it with an ATV. Um, one of the things that I really like, and I don't know if it's on this page, so I'm going to talk about it here in this picture, is they've got this door on the front of it that you can see here. This is an access door to what they call a garage. <clears throat> Inside of there, it's a big opening. It's probably a foot and a half deep, and it's all the way up to where it says Ice Pro all the way down to the ground. You can put your propane tanks in there. You could put extra gear in there. You could put your auger in there, chain straps, batteries, everything that you want in there, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can go ahead and pack all of that stuff in there, uh, and then you can lock it down. They've got a light here. They've got cranks on the house, so you can raise it and lower it, but it is pretty freaking sweet. Again, these guys are out of uh, Minnesota. Two of them made so far, but feel free to call and order yours today. I think they told me they start at $26,000, uh, but they look well made. It is a two-piece fiberglass design. That's one thing that I like about it is that all of the white on this shell is one piece of fiberglass. The bottom is one piece of fiberglass. So you're not going to get uh, leaks or anything on your roof in terms of where the seams are because it is that one full piece. So check it out if you're interested. Again, I did a video on it here we go he's opening the door up looks like a battery shut off there he's got his ramps in there so that's pretty cool uh i did a video earlier this week check it out on the channel if you want to see that it was a recap of the boat show where i walked around looked at a few things and this was one of the things that i looked at <clears throat> all right one other thing that is relatively new summit fishing it's not necessarily a new product but it's a bundle option so they now just started uh offering pre-assembled package deals. So if you're interested in picking up right now, it looks like they've got the UHD 93 SV and the UHD 293 SV with either GT54, GT56 transducer. You can get each of those and you can also get an Ultra 2 106 SV with the GT56. You can get any of those from them. And what you're going to get is the screen with transducer that you choose, Live Scope Plus, so the LVS34, an amped 30 amp hour battery, which is great. I wonder, is it the same battery if you go to the 106? Looks like it didn't change. Oh, it says right here. Uh, 106, you get the 48 amp hour. In the UHD2, you get the 32 amp hour NMC, which is great. Uh, you get the Summit HD CNC shuttle. You get the 24 to 60 inch pole with the LVS 34 mount in the large pole holder. So pretty cool. If you're looking to just pack, pick up a package and go, uh, this could be a good option for you. 2934 is not a bad deal for this, especially with the, the nice shuttle, the batteries and everything that you're going to get. <clears throat> Mitch, thanks for tuning in here. Ready for an open water show. <clears throat> yeah, there was one last weekend, uh, Minneapolis, uh, convention center. Uh, they had the uh, Northwest Sports Show, Sports and Boating Show I went to. Checked out some pretty cool stuff there. All right. One other thing I want to tell you about deals. I've got an end of season ice fishing deals <clears throat> blowout video that's going to be coming out uh, within the next week here on all of the deals that I can find that are killer deals at the end of the ice season. 
Now is the best time to buy ice fishing gear if you're going to purchase it because everybody's trying to get rid of it because it's it's basically open water season now, right? Everybody's done ice fishing. And so they want to get the ice fishing gear out so they're not sitting on it. And so that video will be coming out to stay tuned to the channel for that uh, as that's coming in. And then uh, one other thing I wanted to drop in here is I am in the market for a new boat, a new to me boat. Uh, I made the decision this year. I'm done with the kayak and kayak fishing, even though that thing was sweet. I had it decked out with trolling motor and everything on it, dual live scope setup. But this year I'm doing a boat. So I am looking for a boat in that 10 to 15,000 first boat. So I want something that I can use and abuse and not worry about it. Um, so if you guys have any leads on good boats, please either drop in the comments, send me a DM, send me a message. I'm looking to pick one up here in the next week or two so I can make a ton of videos about it, get out on the water with it. Um, if you guys have pur purchased a boat recently and have any tips, anything that I need to be aware of, please let me know. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for watching tonight's stream. Again, if you have any questions, if you want to see any certain content on these streams as they come up, Every Tuesday, 9 p.m. is the new time. Drop it down in the comments below or shoot me a message. Thank you so much. Until next time, take it easy.